So the graph is going to be the Google for the blockchain industry. Buenos dias, buenos dias, buenos dias, and welcome back to Cryptocito. Yo, there's a new star on the crypto skies, an absolute bomb that just dropped and got listed on all major exchanges, including Coinbase and Binance on day one, actually. I got really lucky because I caught the public sale back then in October and bought in at three cents. Also, I think GRT set new records in terms of trading volumes and liquidity within just a few days. It's absolutely mind blowing. So we'll be looking into this, but more importantly, we'll also look into what the graph actually is and does. Why is it so hyped? How high can we go? What role is it going to play in this bull run or for the entire blockchain space? Because in fact, the graph is the Google for the blockchain industry. All right, so without losing any time, let's go straight into it. First of all, congratulations for being in this pre-bull run. A lot of people are going to be insanely rich over the next couple of months, I think, because we're just entering another phase of decentralizing wealth, as I like to call it. And crypto is just the fastest growing asset class under the sun. So keep that in mind. Because in the short term, I think crypto is there to make a lot of us crazy rich. And in the, while in the long term, we can really distribute power and we can really disrupt finance, monetary policies and the economy as a whole. Today, we'll be talking about the graph because it's just one of the top performers. In my opinion, right now, it's very overheated and maybe even overbought at those levels. But um, I want you to keep those numbers here in mind here in the 24 hour trading volume before we get into the graph chart. Bitcoin has a trading volume of 38 billion US dollars in the last 24 hours. Ethereum 15 billion, XRP 7.4. Chainlink, 804 million. Binance Coin, 744, right? And then it goes down, down, down. So if we look at the graph, which is by the way here on top of the trending search on CoinGecko since it basically came out, the graph has a trading volume of 3.3 billion, right? So it's like four, five times more than Chainlink, right? It's crazy. And it only has a market cap only of uh, 800 million US dollars. However, the fully diluted market cap is already at 6.47 billion, right? So if we compare that, for example, to Chainlink, and you will see there's a lot of analogies between the graph and Chainlink. Chainlink has a fully diluted of 13 billion. So it already basically has almost 50% of the fully diluted market cap of Chainlink, right? Total supply here is at 10 billion tokens. And we'll also look at a little bit into the tokenomics later. Yeah, if you just look at the chart here, it's just like a, a straight line to the moon, more or less, right? It's only out for, for a couple of days. It's just going up, up, up. Um, got listed around 10 cents on Coinbase first. Then Binance came out, OKX came out. You can already leverage trade it on several exchanges. The hype is real. Right, the numbers so far look incredibly impressive. This is just pure art, guys, right? This is just pure art. And this is what price discovery looks like for a fundamentally strong project. Um, so I think Right now, we're in a phase where this may be a bit overbought. It's maybe like too high and too much and too fast, right? A lot of people just jumped on it to, in order to make quick bucks here. And that's all fair enough. That's what crypto is about, right? A lot of speculation, a lot of traders. The volume candles are absolutely insane right here. But yeah, I would wait. If you're just looking at this and your primary question is like, should I buy, should I not buy right now? I would say rather, rather wait. I'd rather wait this to cool off, but in the long run, and we'll be talking about this today, in the long run, the graph can easily become a top 20, maybe even top 10 cryptocurrency, right? Just like Chainlink became a top 10 cryptocurrency and um, it's already established there, right? And also one major thing that played in the cards of GRT to go really up that fast that much is... Um, because they came out on a day when Bitcoin made crazy new all-time highs, right? So people were probably cashing out and looked into something new. And um, the graph just got listed on that day on Coinbase, right? So if you get the chance to put put your hands first on a, on a coin that gets listed on Coinbase and then two hours later on Binance, that might be very intriguing and, and promising for, for those guys who were cashing out their Bitcoin gains. And also the listing announcement itself came very spontaneously. The only thing they said during the public sale in October was that they will be um, listing or launching the mainnet 60 to 90 days after the, the sale. So let's look into what the graph is actually trying to become or what protocol they're actually building. So the graph 
is going to be the Google for the blockchain industry. And what is Google doing, right? Google is just indexing content, right? Indexing information and facilitating those data so that they can be accessed by content consumers, right? By people like you and I, right? We just type a keyword in Google and we can find it, right? We have the front end to access this information, which is on the internet, right? So Google is basically just aggregating and indexing those information, this content, this data, in order to make it accessible for the people. Now, the graph is trying to do the exact same thing just for the Web3, right? Because we're now elevating, we're upgrading from Web2 to Web3. We're upgrading from an internet landscape where we can read and write um, applications to also um, add the decentralized peer-to-peer -peer function or, or um, perspective to it, right? Because the Web3 is a decentralized internet. And in a decentralized internet, we also need decentralized data query. And there's basically two very important ways that we need to that we need to decentralize. One thing is to bring off-chain data on chain, right? And that is what Chainlink is doing. Chainlink is that Oracle platform that uh, verifies data that comes from off-chain um, channels and data sources and puts that on chain, right? And the graph is trying to do the next step, which is to query data from blockchains or even in the future from other um, data sources like IPFS, for example, to query that and to make it accessible for front end developers. So one useful analogy here that I think makes a lot of sense to, to easier understand what the graph is doing and what is the difference to Chainlink is if you think about selling on Amazon, okay? So if you are selling on Amazon, and I know that because I am selling on Amazon, right? You need two things. First, you need to um, put all the information that you get from your suppliers, from the product, you need to, like about the quality, like you need to go get all that external uh, information, you need to all put that into the listing, right? That's the first step. And that is what Chainlink is doing, right? They're putting off-chain data on-chain, right? So think of a listing basically like a blockchain. And then the next step is how can you make this information, this data that you just gathered and that you just put on-chain, how can you make that visible for the average shoppers on Amazon, right? And that's where the Amazon search bar comes in. If you type in a keyword as an end consumer in the search bar on Amazon, um, you want to see products, right? And that's where the graph comes in because the graph indexes all those keywords that you attach to your Amazon listing so that the end user can type in that keyword and find your product. So the graph is basically trying to uh, make on-chain data accessible for the people and visible, right? So that makes it much easier, for example, for front-end developers to build useful interfaces with reliable data input, right? Super important thing. And that's why also, for example, on the graph, they're already working with most DeFi projects, right? Like they're already working with Synthetix, um, Aave, Uniswap, Decentraland, right? Like they have hundreds of partners that are already deployed, even Aragon Court, hundreds of protocols that are already working with them. And so far, the graph is only focused on Ethereum, but in the future, I think early next year, they're also trying to build a bridge with IPFS and other chains, right? Multi-chain support is going to be really, really essential here because if they manage to, to achieve that, then this can truly, truly become the, the new Google for the blockchain space. That is why the graph is so important. That way it's so huge. And here they give even examples. You can watch that demo. For example, which exchanges have the most liquidity, right? So you can query that data. Um, and the way it's being done is through so-called subgraphs, right? And subgraphs are basically those open APIs that developers can just propose to the network. And once they um, get, get created and get coded, right? You can also earn fees from that if you are a um, subgraph developer called curator. Everybody, every individual can actually become part of that, right? So there are three walls that we can take either as an indexer, meaning that you become an actual node operator which provides the highest level of security, but also requires some technical knowledge. You can become a curator, meaning that you can um, create or propose subgraphs um, to the network, which also requires some form of technical um, knowledge. Or you can simply become a delegator, which means that you can only 
um, you're only basically securing the network, but you can also earn reward, right? So in all three ways, you can earn passive income more or less. Obviously, delegators require the least technical um, technical knowledge, but probably also the least rewards. I haven't looked into the reward structure yet, but it is definitely interesting. And it is already live, guys. It's already live. The main it is live. Here's some use cases. Like I said, Uniswap, Synthetics, um, Aragon, Decentraland. I will also link this article and all the sources that I used to, to make this video down below. But essentially here in this uh, top paragraph, it already says basically a good summary about the product, which is that developers can build serverless applications that run entirely on public infrastructure. The graph network consists of indexers, curators, and delegators that provide services to the network and serve data to Web3 applications. And they are financially incentivized to do that as well, right? Because the GRT token has a built-in inflation in the first year of 3%. And then later on, um, when the uh, governance structure is being built up and the decentralized governance uh, mechanism, then the community can basically decide how to continue with that, right? Should we increase, decrease? The annual inflation because that is rewards that go into the pockets of those networks participants and there are already more than 2,000 subgraphs being deployed on the graph on the network which is already quite substantial but um, I think this is just the very very beginning and you can already see here in the daily queries chart the graph is being actively used from 1 billion queries in the month of June to over 10 billion in November right so that's averaging 300 million queries per day and you can see here in, in the beginning of the year that's also when when DeFi, DeFi blew up around that time but before that you had uh, maybe 30 40 20 million per day and now you 10x that number so the network is being used here's a mini roadmap of what they've done since june and what they are trying to do um next year yeah so we are here right now in december mainnet launch just happened the grt distribution just happened the graph council is launched or is being launched right now um and next year um i think the most important part here is at least from my perspective one of the most important parts is the multi-blockchain um feature the multi-blockchain element here on the roadmap because like i said initially right now if it's just limited to ethereum that's cool right ethereum is a huge network already most DeFi is taking place on ethereum but as we're advancing with polka dots and cosmoses and and all those new chains and traditional systems as well traditional internet ipfs like if they can really become that multi-chain or cross-chain query protocol future for grt and for the project of course is going to be really really huge also important thing in terms of code security um, the graph has several audits open zeppelin has performed one and off-chain components by trail of bits and um, yeah uh, other parts of the protocol but this is not published yet i think and yeah lastly here you can also see a quick overview of how the graph interacts with Chainlink, with d apps and also with data sources from public chains right like i said initially the graph is basically extracting data from public chains or from other public databases, indexes those information and sends them over to dApps, right? Just making them usable, right? It's just basically facilitating data to just build reliable data output within their decentralized application, right? And where Chainlink comes in, well, Chainlink can take those query results as Oracle in terms of price feeds, for example or on-chain liquidity. So those are very important features in order to make the data throughput and basically the entire blockchain ecosystem more robust, right? Less vulnerable to central points of failure. So right, after all, I think the graph is going to play an important role during this bull cycle. Um, not just the token, but also the technology and the product itself, which is already live and being, being tested and used by many 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 projects in the crypto space personally i think that the graph can definitely become a top 20 cryptocurrency i mean it's already it's already in the best way there right it's just 8 uh, 1.6 billion dollar market cap and currently the graph is sitting at 800 million right so it's basically another 2x from here which would make it at 1 dollar 25 or something like that i don't think this is going to happen tomorrow but it can definitely become something that um that will play out during during this bull run. Or take, for example, Red Bitcoin, right? Which was solving a huge pain point in terms of making Bitcoin functionable and usable 
at least the value of Bitcoin in the DeFi space, right? And compatible with the Ethereum um, virtual machine by just wrapping Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. But the way they do it is very centralized. So, right, so it's, it's not even decentralized. It's not even cross-chain. What I'm trying to say is that the graph might play a more fundamental or essential part in the entire Web3 infrastructure, right? Not just resolving one use case, right? So it's, not, it's not a hybrid solution. It's a very long-term sustainable solution that we need as an essential backbone for the Web3 infrastructure. We're building that decentralized web. I think those fundamentally strong coins are definitely going to reflect also their value here on CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko. So I'm really hyped on the graph. I, like I said, I bought into the public sale lucky. I didn't sell any, everything. Um, I'm still holding a bag, even though I sold a lot. Also just around 73, 74 cent levels. So yeah, let's see how high it can go. I think a setback, a correction is going to come inevitably, right? Because never in history has something just gone up. There's always corrections. Um, so yeah, short term, I would say be careful long term. I think it plays a huge, huge role. And I will link you all those articles down below so you can take a closer look. Just don't, don't wanna make this video too lengthy. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you holding GRT? What do you think about the team, about the project? Yeah, and if, if you see this, I hope we can make an interview together. We'll be really, really honored to do that with you. And I will see you guys on the next one.